they made me say things I didn't say. Mm. They just put pieces together, thousands of pieces of my show. And so when I went into trial for the last trial, after prison, after I got out of prison, I was put on trial again. Mm. And in that, the lawyers got all that tape that the government had edited. The government did it. Just like now. This is cancel culture. And they took it apart and put it back the way it was on the show. And the lies, they made me tell lies that weren't there. Unbelievable. And when the, when the, when the, the uh, courts heard this, they saw the first video, what the government had edited, and then they saw the one from the original. They voted unanimously that I wasn't guilty. Wow. Nobody knows these That's things, right. hardly. It was in the paper, the same papers that brought me down, but it was like two inches in the back of the paper. Jim Baker wins. It was cancel culture. That's right. They did everything to cancel me. That was televangelist Jim Baker eloquently explaining how if you get caught committing fraud and embezzling money and you go to prison for it, that's actually cancel culture. It's not you being held accountable because you were found guilty of crimes by a jury. That's actually just another form of cancel culture. And seeing that Jim Baker went to prison in the 1980s, it goes to show you how far back we can find these examples of cancel culture. I mean, look, folks, we have to ask ourselves this question. Do we really want to live in a society where people can't even defraud others and embezzle money without getting canceled? I mean, do we live in a dictatorship? This is cancel culture. Obviously, I'm being facetious if your sarcasm detector is broken, but this is the logical conclusion of uh, cancel culture discourse in the United States of America. Yeah. Now, if you really want to know why Jim Baker went to prison, we have more details by Right Wing Watch, and Kyle Montala explains, in 1989, televangelist Jim Baker was convicted by a jury of 24 counts of fraud and conspiracy and sentenced to 45 years in prison for having bilked members of the Praise the Lord ministry out of hundreds of millions of dollars. Baker had raised these funds by selling lifetime partnerships to viewers that entitled them to an annual free stay at his Heritage USA Christian theme park. But the number of partnerships sold far exceeded the park's capacity and millions of dollars were diverted to fund Baker's own lavish lifestyle. Baker's sentence was subsequently reduced on appeal and he was released from prison in 1994. Baker's claim that he was found not guilty by a subsequent jury is misleading and self-serving as author John Wigger explained in his book, PTL, The Rise and Fall of Jim and Tammy Faye Baker's Evangelical Empire. And in that book, it reads, a year and a half after he was released from custody, Baker went to trial one more time. In 1990, he'd been convicted of common law fraud in order to pay $129 million. At that trial, the judge ruled that people who paid for lifetime partnerships at Heritage USA had done so primarily for the free lodging, not as a financial investment. In September of 1994, a federal appeals court reversed that ruling, reinstating securities fraud charges against Baker. Before the new case went to trial in July of 1996, the former PTL partners, represented by California attorney Tom Anderson, stipulated that they would no longer seek to collect the earlier $129 million judgment against Baker. Instead, they now sought to collect $121 million from the insurance company that had covered PTL against acts of negligence, but not against fraud. The case turned on the relatively narrow question of whether the lifetime partnerships were securities or investments, not just the promise of free lodging. For the first time, Baker engaged with his lawyers in preparing a defense. They hired Ron Heacock, a 14-year police veteran, to review 200 hours of videotape from PTL telethons, much as the prosecution had done at Baker's criminal trial in 1989. Heacock put together excerpts from the telethons in which Baker explained that money given for the lifetime partnerships would also be used to fund PTL as a whole. Of course, at other times, Baker left this out. But from the standpoint of whether he was selling securities, the evidence was convincing. After two and a half hours of deliberation, 
conviction, the jury sided with Baker and the insurance company. Baker would later claim that the verdict vindicated him of fraud in the sale of lifetime partnerships, but the case was never about that. The plaintiffs had forfeited the $129 million fraud verdict against Baker simply because he had no money for them to collect. So those are the juicy details. And if you're wondering, did Jim Baker learn his lesson? Well, um, the short answer to that is no, because he's still a huckster, currently being sued for selling what he argued was a cure for COVID-19. But hey, by his logic, that's just cancel, cancel culture. culture. If you can't defraud people and embezzle money, well, I mean, you're just being canceled. It's just the authoritarian leftists and the liberal woke media who won't even let people get away with committing fraud. I mean, look, with the trajectory of the cancel culture discourse, I don't think there's any valid conversations left to be had about this subject. Any and everything that's done against you, any criticism, that's all categorized as cancel culture now. What's that? I went to prison because I was found guilty of defrauding people by a, a, an actual jury? Cancel culture. What? I was accused of inappropriately touching women? Well, Andrew Cuomo says that's cancel culture too. It was cancel culture. Anything that I don't like, any wrong that I'm called out for, that is tantamount to cancel culture. And since cancel culture is bad, then the accusations against these individuals must also be bad. Like, it's a really sleazy psychological trick because a lot of folks, they just have this visceral response to cancel culture. They don't like it because they associate it with things that they deem are bad and they don't want to be canceled themselves. They don't want to, you know, be fired from their jobs because they said something inappropriate or politically incorrect on social media. So they just think, oh, well, this person is saying, is saying that they're being canceled. I can empathize with that and I don't want to be canceled as well. So it's really just this manipulative tactic now. That's what it's become, at least, to get people to be sympathetic towards your position, but in actuality, no, you weren't canceled, Jim Baker, because you went to prison. You were convicted by a jury and went to prison because you defrauded people to the tune of millions of dollars and you enriched yourself by lying to people. If that's cancel culture, then cancel culture is good because I think that there should be legal accountability if you rip people off. So in a way... What folks who uh, like overuse cancel culture are going to end up inadvertently doing is bringing this entire argument full circle where they make cancel culture actually seem based. What's that? Andrew Cuomo was called out for sexual misconduct and he's saying that that's cancel culture. Well, I think that you should be called out for inappropriate touching. Cancel culture, therefore, must be good. Like, do you understand? Like, the argument has become so absurd that they're going to force people to flip when it comes to cancel culture because everyone is using it as an excuse now. And it's truly just insufferable. Look, we live in a society where we all make mistakes. Sometimes we commit crimes. Some people commit crimes, in particular Jim Baker. And you get imprisoned for that. You get called out for saying something politically incorrect a couple of years ago. That's just the nature of society. It's going to continue to happen. Um... But you can't just reduce everything down to this overly simplistic argument that, oh, I'm being canceled. The woke mob is coming after me because you're full of it. You're full of shit and everyone can see right through you. So, um, yeah, I don't think that there's much uh, left to say about this. This televangelist, Jim Baker, has continued to sell snake oil and defraud people. And so uh, I think that he's anticipating the next imprisonment or lawsuit going against him. And he's already kind of like trying to set people up to believe that if they come after him, this is just cancel culture and there's no way that he can possibly be guilty because, of course, him being seen as this huckster that he is isn't good for his grift. So he's trying to keep his audience. But, I mean, there's this cynical side of me that thinks if you're getting taken advantage of by someone this deliberate, who's this brazen of a snake oil salesman, that I mean, I don't feel bad for you. Maybe you deserve to be taken advantage of if you're this stupid, honestly. Like, I don't feel bad for people who buy his scam cures and stuff like that if you're that fucking stupid. Like, stop believing people who you look up to. Stop believing that they have your intentions or have the best intentions and they're looking out for you. They're trying to line their pockets. That's it. See it for what it is. Stop being rubes. 
and stop bitching about fucking cancel culture for the love of God, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Cancel me. Beta. Alpha male, not a beta male.